All right, all right, all right. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We're back uh, with another video, part four of Bollinger Bands and um, reading them, trading them. In the past uh, three videos, we talked about kind of how to read the Bollinger Bands. Again, all this stuff is just uh, based off how I view it and my opinion. I, I don't, I don't want to say that I'm the expert on Bollinger Bands per se, but I know it's a popular usage and quite simple when it comes to, it looks like picking your uh, entries and potential exits for your trades. Um, part two, we talked about doing call options based off of coming off the bottom side of the bands, right? Uh, which is our white line. And then in part three, we talked about hedging and doing short-term puts when you come off the top side of uh, of the bands and doing a hedge uh, hedging doing a short-term put play on your existing long-term position of your call so in this video i wanted to take an opportunity to look at um kind of throwing together a trading plan based off of some of the things that we just talked about in the last three videos so we still have apple here up on our screen um, we still also have up, um, uh, we have up the things from our think back and the analyze tab. We still have these items that are on here as well of uh, what we had initially had been trading or whatnot, or I guess it reset itself a little bit. Yes, yeah, because I closed out thinkers fun, but that's neither here nor there. But wanted to talk about kind of a simple way of creating a trading plan. And uh, with the trading plan, there's a few aspects that you want to consider. Um, and let's go with the fact that we're doing a trading plan, we're a swing trader, and maybe you want to get into plays that are, say, three to six months per se, right? Of course, when you create your trading plan and you have your indicator set up, in this case, our indicator will be from the Bollinger Bands, you can set up your time frame of, you know, your option trades if you're going to swing trade longer term. Where you're looking at six, nine, 12 months, or short term, one, three months, or even super long term, one, two years, or even short, short term, intraday, um, you would have your trading plan and it will differ depending on how long you're in those particular trades. And so let's just talk about some of the things that are a part of the trading plan. Number one thing would be how would you fit trading into your life, right? So if you're working a job uh, like most individuals or yeah, if you're working a job like most individuals, you can't sit in front of the market and watch it all day. And besides, you don't want to sit in, the, in front of the market and watch it all day unless you were also doing some intraday trades or day trading or whatnot, or you were doing some very short term weekly trades. If that was your, uh, is that what, if that's what your thing is, I know it's mine for uh, a moment in time, and I still like it. Um, so there's some days where I'm looking at the market more frequently. But what you can do for yourself, if we take a look at this chart, is um, let's say that um, you uh, were back here again in the October range of April, and you see that it's hit the top side of the band, and uh, it's already rolled down some. Now, you can say to yourself, dang, I missed this opportunity to maybe hedge my position or something like that. So in order to you know, fit it into your life, you don't want to sit here and, and have to watch at all moments of time, when will this thing get back down to the lower side of the bands so I can buy in? What you would do is you can set up an alert that's available in Thinkorswim, um, or you can you can set up multiple alerts as maybe the stock rolls its way down uh, to the bottom side. Maybe you have your, you know, you right click on your Thinkorswim platform and you can create an alert when it hits the 20 period moving average and say, hey, you know, when it's at or below, uh, 115.05, you know, alert me, send a text to my, um, to my phone, right, um, or to my app. And then you can set another alert when it gets a little bit lower, because let's say maybe buying it at 115 is not what you want to do, but you want to start to have your alert set so you can have an idea, okay, this is going that way. So maybe you set up another alert down towards the bottom end of the band of like 11, 111 at this point, right? And you would say to yourself, let me get rid of these lines because I know they've been on here. It could be a little confusing right now. But you can say to yourself, all right, you know, I kind of got my alert when it went down below 115. Oh, now I can pay a little bit more attention. And that's how you can fit it into your life because as you can see here, it hit um, below 115 for a little bit on October 22nd, but really didn't close below it until 
you know, uh, October 28th. So your first alert would have went off on October 22nd, your second alert um, on this day, October 28th. And now you're probably paying even closer attention because it's going down lower to a place of where you would want to do your entry point. Okay. And that's how you can fit it into your life. So you don't have to pay attention. Now, what you can also do is say to yourself, I'll set up, a, I'll, I'll set up maybe automatic orders. Right. If you if you know you want to buy Apple at uh, one eleven um, or at a lower price, you can set up an, uh, an automatic limit order to say once it hits that price, go ahead and enter me in because that's the price I want to buy it at, regardless if it, you know, continues to go down a little bit more or if it bounces up from there. That's a good thing. If it continues to fall down a little bit more, then, you know, you'll evaluate that point. But you could say, you know buy at this price because that's what I want to pay for Apple. So first thing about your trading plan is figure how are you going to fit trading kind of into your life, right? And of course, if you're doing more long term, you can be very intermediate in, you know, knowing how many trades you're getting into, you're probably not going to trade as frequently if you're doing long term. But those who are doing maybe some two, three, four months uh, swing trades, you, you'll be paying attention a little bit more and maybe you have uh, some more trades as well. The second aspect of a trading plan is like, what will you trade, right? So you have your asset classes. We can either trade the stock itself, right? We're gonna buy or sell the stock. We also have, um, we can buy or trade the option on the option chain, you know, on our strike prices and things of that nature, okay? And there's bonds, but you know, who trades bonds? Nonetheless, uh, you also have your time frame. Um, and I think this is more particularly to with uh, options, in my opinion, um, it, it could be applied to everything, but let's speak particularly to options. As I mentioned, if you're going to do swing trades that you're going to be two to three months out, then you always know when you open up the option chain, you're going to look at things that are, uh, you know, two to three months out. So 60 to 90, maybe 120 days. So if you're playing um, right now, this is of course the you know, current time frame of Apple, right? And we're down here on the bottom side of the Bollinger Bands. And if you know that you're gonna do two, three month out options on uh, Apple, if that's what's a part of your plan, you're trading monthly options, then you're gonna go to the uh, options chain and you're gonna immediately take your eyes down to something that's within 60 to 90 or 60 to 120 uh, 120 days which you have you know these three options here of expirations you got your may your june and your july and you know then determine your your strike price at that point based off the um based off the expiration that you're picking and then one of the other things about what would you trade what's your pattern that you're going to trade now we have the indicator of a, a bollinger bands but sometimes there's particular patterns like what we, what do we see here particularly overall for apple we see an uptrend right but there are other patterns that do exist right there are uh rolling stocks where there's sideways action where you can buy at support sell at resistance um there are downtrending stocks i guess a good example here of a short-term downtrend is on our beloved um amd when my uh <laughs> when my thinker swim wants to get his act together it'll pull it up there but amd has been on you know a recent downtrend with the hit to the nasdaq so we've had uptrend action then we also had some sideways action here on amd and then we've had pretty much a downtrend here since really since uh mid january we've had a downtrend on amd and that's why i have those downtrend lines we have lower highs we have lower lows right and uh so we could see that in our bollinger bands we you know pick something that when it runs on the top side of the band for it to snap back and we'd have an exit point. If you're doing downtrends, of course, those are gonna even be a little bit more shorter, but you would pick your pattern. Like what are the patterns that you're looking at for your stocks? And you would pretty much go through your watch list, your, your stock list that you may have built, and you would look to see what is in, you know, what stocks have the pattern that you are looking for. You wanna see things that you can tell are consistent where you've seen the pattern repeat itself two times or maybe even three times to show that hey this thing is is pretty much going 
up or it pretty much is going down or it is rolling, right? That's the pattern that you're seeing and that you would want to be able to trade. So um, uh, obviously uh, there's a lot of other things that can go along with that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm moving fast here through, you know, selecting, you know, your expiration, but then there's also a method to selecting your strike price. But we're looking at the overall aspect of doing a, um, a trading plan. And it's just understanding pretty much what is it that you're going to trade. And so speaking about options, particularly, we started off with how will you fit it into your life? Will you use alerts? Will you use zones? Will you use automatic orders? If you're buying stock, you can do automatic orders. Even if you're doing options, you can do automatic limit orders as well. But also, you know, um, you can just have alerts for when things hit prices that you want to pay attention to or start to pay more attention to your stock. What will you trade? Will you trade stocks, options, or bonds? We're talking about options, particularly here. The time frame: Are you going to be doing weekly, monthly, long-term trades, right? And when we say monthly, we're kind of talking about two, you know, monthly expirations on your option, not just the weekly ones, because there's weekly expirations, but the primary ones that exist are monthly expirations. Okay. And then we go from one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, twelve months out, right? Um, now, the second, uh, one of the third things, next thing that you want to consider about a trading plan is when you're going to, you know, entering in your trade, right? And so when you're entering in your trade, you're, this is where that pattern comes into play a little bit more. So as we've talked about with the Bollinger Bands, we said that we were going to enter in the trade when it hits the bottom side of the band and kind of bounces up. So this would be a part of your trading plan is entering if I'm going to use the Bollinger Bands as my one of my main indicators, I want to see the, uh, the stock hit the bottom of the Bollinger Bands and have a candlestick that moves up off of it. When I see that, I will enter in my trade, right? So you can identify that also too as an area that would be your support. So you say I'm a buy at support and maybe exit at resistance or exit at the previous high, okay? So in this case, um, if we, you know, I have these trending lines here, my dotted lines are my trend lines. That was for the uptrend of Apple. So I could say, all right, for one, we're at the bottom side of the bands. We're also at the support of my trend lines. I'm going to enter here and I, I like what I see. I see a bounce off of the Bollinger Bands, which is also off of the uh, trend lines, and I'm going to place my entry. That's how you're determining a, in the easiest case there of entering into your trade, right? You can either enter in on the day of the bounce, or you can wait for a follow through day. So today, obviously, this is the bounce day or some would say the doji is the bounce day, but this is technically the day that it bounced up off of the support area. And so you can say, if you wanna be uh, more aggressive, enter in this day, or you can even enter in the following day. Or even when we come down again, and we see that we have the red candlestick down to, to the trend line, the support of the, of the trend line, we see this as a green day, you can say, you know what, I, I think that's my bounce and I'm gonna enter this day, or you can wait for a follow-up day. Those are the things that you would put into your trading plan. Also, you could be heavily looking into the volume. Is there a lot of volume on the day? Uh, do I wanna see the volume be above average on the day that I enter? Um, and if, if you put volume as an aspect of when you enter your trades and it needs to be above a particular average, then in any of these cases, you would not have entered because if that's something that's that important to you, then you wouldn't enter in because it's not above the average volume, but you would have missed out on a good move too. So you kind of have to pick what are your must haves versus your nice to haves, right? Or, um, you know, I, as I was saying with, you know, my group of financial disciples, you know, if you're dating a male, you know, if you're a lady dating a male, a male dating a female, and you're saying to yourself, okay, what does he or she have to have? They got to have a job, they got to have a car. You know, they got to not be in debt or broke or large credit card debt or something. You know, those are some of the things that you have to consider of the must-haves. But what would be the nice-to-haves? 
okay, it would be nice maybe if they owned a home, but if they have a nice rental spot that they have, whether it's a condo or a home, that's fine. You know, um, it, or it would be, if you have a particular style of look that you're looking for, some things are must-haves and some things are nice to have. So when you're creating your trading plan, think of what your must-haves should be and what your nice-to-haves. Volume may be a nice-to-have. Or another indicator, your RSI. If you were always going to wait for your RSI to come down and, and be below the 30 uh, in your buying opportunity and cross above it, if that's a must have, then in this case on Apple from September to, you know, last month and at the end of February, you, you didn't get that. So you have to say to yourself, does that happen often? And maybe the RSI is not the best secondary indicator for you particularly, but we use it with the Bollinger Bands. It gives us a good idea of some things. If that was a must have, you would never have entered into any of this trade and you would have missed all of this move from 103 to 145. But if it's a nice to have, and you can say, well, I'm down in that range pretty closely to 30, then you could still make that entry of that trade. So again, determine your must haves and your nice to haves on the pattern that you're looking at and the indicator that you have. The other aspect of setting up your trade, and one thing that they always say that you should do, and I also, I would agree, is determining, you know, what is either your target from a price point, price standpoint of the stock price or a percentage ROI, and what is your stop loss, right? What is your stop out um, price? So let's go into looking at it a little bit more specifically here, right? If we're entering on this day here on, a, on November 3rd, which we did on that option, we are saying to ourselves, what is our target? And we have a few things that we can go by. You could say, you know what? I want to get to the previous high and then I'll exit. Or um, I want to at least get to the top side of the band and then, and then I'll exit at that point. Those are pretty, two pretty good you know, targets that you would have. Or, and that's setting up a price target. You're saying, hey, I want to go from the 109 range back up to the 125, or at least back up to the you know, 122 range. And that's the top side of the band. And then when it reaches that target, you exit. So the funny thing is, is that we don't all follow our plans. <laughs> but the saying goes, plan your trade and trade your plan. But human innate, human <laughs> emotion and nature goes, well, maybe there's more that I can get from this move, right? Um, or maybe, or maybe it's there's a piece where you you get it and you're just like, yeah, maybe I can get more. But then there's also a point where you're kind of almost there and you're like, oh, maybe it's not gonna make it there. So I'll just exit right now. And you cut yourself out of your plan. I guess the problem pretty much here is, is that when you don't trade your plan, and uh, you, well, when you plan your trade and yet you do not trade your plan, that leads to a lack of discipline. And the lack of discipline will burn you when it comes to investing. Lack of discipline will burn you in all endeavors that you do, quite honestly, but it burns you even more <laughs> in trading. And I will, could be the first one to say that I have many, 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 many a times have not followed my trading plan and those are when i do take some pretty not bad losses all the time but stupid losses it's like if i would have just stayed in it would have done exactly what i expected it to do and a lot of times i cut myself short but then when it runs the opposite way and it says and it reaches my stop out and i should have stopped out say down here at the 106 area or something like that you're like, dang it, I should have stopped out at 106 and now we're down to 100. I've already lost so much money, I might as well stay. I've been there, I've been there and I've done that. So I could speak from that experience. And that is more of a mental blockage of discipline that you have to get over and you have to get over even also by experiencing it. I don't know if there's a way to just not like you have to be already a strictly disciplined person from the jump if you're not if you don't have those issues kudos to you my my brother or sister but for me i had those issues so there's some bad losses 
there's some um, there's some gains that got cut short because I didn't continue to follow my plan because lack of fear and things of that nature. So went on a little tangent there, but still to the point of knowing when your price target is and knowing when you potentially will stop out. So let's say we're entering in on November 3rd again here, we're gonna run it up um, and we wanna run it to the, uh, to the target price of uh, the previous high, which is $125 from the, 10, from the 109. And let's say we're in, that, um, we're in that six month trade, right? So we've decided to pick that six month expiration. So it doesn't expire until we get out there to the April area, right? March, April area. And, um, and so we have time, right? So we would enter into our call option with that expiration. And since it has not got, it's not gotten here, we're gonna just pretty much wait until it gets there. And it gets there um, on 12.9. And if you decided to exit at that point, you would exit that, you would exit your trade when it reaches that price target. And based on, you know, that's obviously, let's take a look at what the percentages of move on Apple. So that's a 14, 15% move on Apple and not too sure of what the option profit is, but we can take a look. Let's base it off of, uh, it's based off of that day. What day is this? 12-8. So let's go to think back. Let's go to Apple. Uh, we're going back to video number part one here. Uh, we're going to November 3rd. We're going to get into that, uh, say, did I say six months? I think I said six months. Did I say six months? I think it was April anyways. Yeah, we did. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, I'm tripping. It's already down here. <laughs> okay, so we're picking, we have this April one. We picked the at the money strike when we did that one. And what's the date that we're going to? My bad folks. We're going to 12-8, okay. So let's go to 12-8. So punch it back some time frame. Nope, I went back too far. 12-8, my thing. All right. So we're at $7,000, uh, $7,500 of profit, right? And so let's do the math. That was about a 14% move in the stock. And what we're at right now, divided by 11,375, is a 66% ROI on your, uh, on your option, okay? So this move here, 15 here to the price target, 14%. Uh, stock price movement, 66% ROI. You've reached your target. If that's a part of your plan to exit when it reaches the stock price, then exit. Okay. Now, the other part of your plan, as we talked about in previous videos, if you had a desire to part, have a part of your plan, a trailing stop, if that's what's in that plan, set your trailing stop at that point when it hits that stock price. And then when it does, we fall back from it after it hits the stock price and then starts to fall back, but you set up your say 5% trailing stop on your 66% profit, then you would exit out essentially either within that day when it falls back or even the next day, because obviously it, it fell back the next day. And you thus traded your plan, okay? Here's the thing, did you miss out on this here? Yes, you did, but you traded your plan. So plan your trade trade your plan. 66% still really good. All right. The other flip side to that is having your stop out, right? So if you're entering into this trade and it may bounce up this way, and obviously it didn't reach your, your, your target, but then it began to fall back down towards 104, 105, where are you going to have your stop out at? What, what price? And, you know, this is a general good rule of where, you know, you could be willing to um, this is also about like willing to know how much you're looking to put into a trade and how much you're willing to risk, but you would have your stop out set. Maybe it's 5% uh, drop from the price of when you enter. Maybe it is 10% of the option premium that you're willing to exit, um, that you're willing to stop out at. So if you entered 
and the, the option price was like we saw in our example, the option price being, you know, $11 and 37 cents. Let's say that you set up, you're like, if it loses 10% of my option, then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to stop out. So minus 10% puts us at $10 and 23 cents. So you can set up your option to say, hey, if I lose 10% on this option, then I'm on, I want to exit, right? And you've almost, and therefore you've lost a little, uh, a little over a thousand dollars, right? In that, in this particular trade, because you put in um, eleven thousand on the trade. I will uh, give you this fair warning that, of course, when you set up a percentage on your stop out, it's based on the stock. When you do five percent uh, drop on the stock price that can definitely equal, you know, an easy, you know, 15, 20, maybe even 25% on your option though, okay? So if you base it off of the stock price, you know, give yourself a little, you, you can't base your 5% off the stock, stock price and think it's 5% on your option. It's definitely gonna be more than 5% uh, of a loss on your option price and your option premium if you set up a 5% stock price on the stock. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can learn these things as you go to. So, uh, but obviously a, a good prime example, maybe it's just more recent times of having that stop, up, stop loss price in play or in place, seeing that you're running on the bottom side of the band and you see that bounce up off there, right? Because a part of your plan is to see when it bounces up off of the Bollinger Bands on the bottom side, you're gonna enter in. So let's say you would have entered in on this day and then it continues to turn around and pull down and draw back further. And you entered in around, you know, say the 126 price. And now you're down here at the 116 price. So you've lost, the, the, the stock has fallen about 8% in those six days. And I'm sure there's a significant drawdown on the option premium that you may have picked. But you would want to know if the stock reaches this price level, then I want to potentially exit. And maybe a good way of saying, hey, you know what? If it breaks one of its previous lows. So it bounced up here, but the previous low was 118. And you say to yourself, I'll exit uh, Apple, I'll exit my option if the stock, stock breaks below the, low, uh, the previous low, which would be 118 here. And so there's three days where it has actually hit that number or gone through. And so you would also want to determine, okay, if it hits it, will I exit? Or if it closes below it, will I exit? That could be a part of your trading plan as well. So you want to be able to have a target price of where you would exit and also in the sense of a stop loss where you would exit to if it runs against your position. Um, and one of the last things that you also want to do uh, that's a part of your trading plan is determine how much money am I going to put into my trade. And so I want to recommend that you base the amount that you put in your trade off of a dollar amount, not off how many contracts or how many shares of stock you would get. Because obviously, 100 shares of Apple, say if we were to buy 100 shares of Apple is going to cost me $12,000. Let's see what this number is. That's $12,000, okay? And if you're saying I only buy 100, 100 share slots, then okay, Apple costs you 12,000, but um, <laughs> steel with 100 shares of steel only costs you $2,000. And so your fluctuation of what your percentage gains are so different in those two worlds based off of, you know, uh, their stock price and also even in the sense their movement, because if both increased by 10%, um, of course, you're going to be happy with your Apple and just kind of like eh with your, um, with your steel. But if you said to yourself, in every trade I put in, I'm going to put in, you know, two, three, two thousand dollars, $3,000, $4,000, then at that point, you just pretty much go and buy $3,000 worth of whatever it is that you want, right? So we're at, in this case, I think we would be doing what, 150 shares? 
puts us around $3,000. Okay, so I'm getting 150 shares of steel. And then when you're looking at Apple, I'm going to be getting, if we're gonna, again, put in $3,000, then for Apple, what will 3,000, what is that number? That's going to be what, 20 shares or something? Twenty-five, I guess. <laughs> oh no, not in Twenty-five shares. What is that? Yeah, so that's twenty-five shares of Apple. So now the thing is, because percentages is based off of amounts. How much percentage profit do you have in your portfolio? Is not based off of your share count. It's based off your amount that you have in in, in the actual trade, and it's the same thing with options. So if we go to the options chain and we're going out there and we're picking that, uh, oh yeah, why is this a like this? Oh yeah, because we're wanting to lose some time. And we're going out there and we're picking, hold on, let me go to the ThinkPack tool. <laughs> and we're picking against, uh, again, that Apple trade in April, we want to select a particular amount. So if we're, if we're again, only putting $3,000 in a trade, Let's take this down to pretty much three contracts. Am I right on that? I'm moving so fast, you guys, that I don't know if I'm right here. So we have 11, <laughs> three, seven, five, times three, oh, times 100, because it was three, 100. Yeah, so that's 3,400, because you can't buy two and a half shares, right? So either you're gonna be low on the side and get $2,200 worth, or you're gonna take a little bit higher and get $3,400 worth. Still pretty much you're putting in about $3,000, uh, especially on the top side. And that allows you to afford, you know, getting that much. Where in steel, and I know we're, you know, it's not obviously not the same picture, but let's say we did a, something that was at the money and add that in there. How much would I would I be able to afford if I was getting steel? Because that's at $2.65. So 3,000, um, what's this? 3,000 divided by 2.265 gets you 1,300. So you would be putting in 13 shares, 13 contracts. So 13 contracts there is, um, is what you would be getting in Apple. So still again, I mean, in, in um, steel. So still, again, in those cases there, you're putting in roughly the same amount. So now you can easily measure what brought you the better return because both have the same amount. So when you grow by 10% in both accounts, then you know what that profit is and how it compares to your other one. But if those numbers are different, if one is up there with the $12,000 amount and another one's down here with the $2,000 amount, the 10% is different. So you really can't gauge which one did, you know, did better or, you know, a 40% increase in steel versus a 20% increase in Apple when you pay two different amounts, you know, it just takes a little bit more work and math on your Excel sheet to really understand it versus if you always kind of consistently put in the same amount um, in your trades, when they run up their percent, particular percentage or run down and you have to stop out a particular percentage, you know what it is. You know what you're gaining and you know what you're losing. So those are some of the basic, you know, kind of simple things about creating a trading plan. Uh, again, just kind of going back over it, you know, how you fit trading into your lifestyle. You set alerts when you do orders, limit orders, automatic things that you put into your system. What will you trade? Are you doing stocks, options, or bonds? You know, how, uh, how frequently are you doing your monthly trades, right? Are you doing monthly options? Um, some people are doing weekly, or are you going to do long term, right? Are you doing six month out trades, nine month out trades, 12 month out trades, right? What pattern are you looking for? Are you looking for stocks that are only going up? Are you looking for stocks that are only going down? Are you looking for stocks that are rolling sideways? And in this case, we didn't even get into candlestick patterns of cup and handles or double tops, double bottoms, triple tops, triple bottoms, head and shoulders. We didn't even look at that stuff. But that's all could be another key part of your particular trading plan. Also, when you're going to enter the trade, when it hits your support levels, in this case, in the Bollinger Bands, when things hit the bottom side of the band, you're going to enter calls. When things hit the top side of the band, you're going to enter puts. 
right? And then um, when to uh, when you're going to exit your trade for your target, are you going to have a dollar amount target or a percentage target? You know, first you may want to stick with just picking a dollar amount and seeing if the stock price gets to that price, and then you'd be able to exit. Or you can say, when I get thirty percent, I'm going to you know set up a trailing stop and something of that nature, and also have the same thing for stopping out. If the stock is going to fall back below a certain price, it's probably when I would exit or at least when I start paying more attention. And then lastly, knowing how much you're going to put into each trade. And as I recommend, keeping it roughly to be about the same investment amount because you can easily gauge your uh, profits and your losses because everything you put in, you put in about the same amount on all the trades. So keep it nice and even to make it easier to calculate profit and losses in most cases. And so with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've run a little bit longer than I wanted to, but wanted to share with you kind of just my opinion and my off the top of the head <laughs> rant on uh, setting up a trading plan. And of course, you know, Google, YouTube, a lot of people have trading plan templates, but I just wanted to make a video um, and uh, share some of these things based off of this uh, now four part series that we have going on to these Bollinger Bands. So, of course, until next time, you guys continue to think, live, and be unstoppable. Peace. See you again.